Obak Barama is President of the United States of America, and I'm pleased. I was alone election night except for my wonder dog, Bentley. Bentley was laying there on the floor and I was watching the early results of the election. It was tense. McCain was starting to lead in some of those red states back east. I was trying to determine what the signs of a stroke might be. Deep down inside I felt this country will not do this. Something like that Bradley effect would occur, me thought. But then suddenly I heard the announcer say, Barack Obama is the next president of the United States. We've called it. I wept. It was that moment that they said on CNN where history focuses in on one moment and we were living it. I turned to Bentley, I grabbed his head and I looked him right in the eye and I said, Bentley, it's gonna be a better world. I'm not sure if it's gonna be a better world for Bentley but I think it's going to be a better world. We had sort of taken a detour. You know how that is when the traffic jam on the freeway is just so intense you can't handle it and you see this road that goes off to the right so you take it? We've been eight years on that road going around winding turns with cliffs that we could have fallen off at any moment. But now we're back on the freeway the traffic jam is still there, but we're moving in the right direction. There's something very good about this that has happened, and the world knew it. Throughout the world, people hoped, with us here, that Barack Obama would be the next president. I think the doomsday clock, the building may have shaked as the clock moved backwards. Um, how wonderful is this? But there's trauma in all of it. I uh, accidentally, f fumbling around with the controls on the clock radio, put it in the wrong station and Rush Limbaugh came on. And there he was. President-elect Obama has not even taken the office of president yet and he was like a caged lion in his cage clawing and snarling not even going to give Obama a chance not even giving us that hope a chance I think that Rush Limbaugh is wrong. I have thought him to be wrong in the past. But it's sad when this country has a chance to get back on chorus and be what the world remembers us. We can do it again. To be a friend, a helpful guide to other countries rather than a big bully. Not if Rush Limbaugh has his is say, we're, we're going to still be the big bully. Shame on you, Rush Limbaugh. So this is going to ham radio. Some guys that I talk to, I try to avoid politics with them because they're right-wing fanatic wackos. They were talking about how the gun stores are running out of guns and ammunition. People are buying guns, they said. Why are they buying these guns? I don't think they have peace on their mind. A little scary. Then they said, oh, Barack Obama, he will change. He's the Antichrist. I think the Antichrist were the Jews that did not accept Christ personally. <laughs> I don't know that uh, it's going to be a man. Anyway, that's a theological discussion we will not get into because it will traumatize both Republicans and Evangelicals, and I do not want to do that in this video. I think since 
Obama grew up in a home with a single parent whose mother was on food stamps. He will not forget his mother, and when he thinks of his mother, he will think of the poor people that he represents. None of the other candidates have a background like that. Okay, enough with politics. I was thinking, a friend of mine I was talking to today on the uh, telephone, no, I have a friend left too, he was a Obama supporter and we still talk, and he's just getting over open heart surgery, and he said, I just don't know what to do with myself. I said, watch the video I'm going to make today. There it is. Now, you think it's a kid's toy, right? It's smaller than the ones that we had when we were kids, the lion holes and things. It's a model train. Back in my early 40s, I had a stroke. It was a traumatic experience. Fortunately, I had a doctor at the house when I had it. I don't fool around when I have a stroke. He uh, was able to figure out what happened relatively quick. And uh, I survived the stroke. There's several stories connected with that stroke, but we're not going there now. We're going to talk about trains. Bottom line was I didn't have any problems like most people with strokes. I mean, I, I didn't have a problem with my right side or my left side. I didn't have a problem with anything except speaking. I could not talk without stuttering. Don't me forget, not today's video, but I want to tell you a story, a very touching story, how I got away from the stuttering. But uh, I, I really felt like my life was over. I came back, I moved from Seattle back to uh, Vancouver, and uh, I sat around the house watching television, not really feeling up to doing anything, because it was a fear that if I would stand up, I would have another one of those strokes. So it, it kept me from doing things. But when I was young, I, I was in the model train. So I said to myself, I think I will build a layout. And money was very short at this point in my life. And I would look in a catalog, and I would see a train like this, and I'd say, someday I will own that train. Lo and behold, I saved my money and I bought it. And then I slowly, slowly started buying other things. And I put together this massive layout. I think I ran it about four or five times. It wasn't operating it. It was the constructing it. It was the drawing out the plans for it. It encompasses everything. It encompasses like electronics. It encompasses mechanics and encompasses woodworking. It gave me the confidence and uh, slowly without a bunch of rehabilitation I took care of it myself. I, I got back on track just like the train and like this country. Anyway, I didn't give a lot of thought to this video today. You may have noticed that. But thank you for uh, your perseverance in staying with me through this, if you will excuse me.